Here we go. Next topic. This is not a good story we're going to cover here. Yeah, I know. I saw this headline. I was like, oh, man, not again. Again. Uh, and I'll tell you, there are a lot of people furious at this guy, John Morant. Uh, he has been suspended a second time. Showed up on Instagram, on video, with a gun. This came weeks and weeks, about nine weeks after he'd been suspended leading into the playoffs for eight games. It cost him $3 million for a gun incident. It's the seventh incident involving him and a gun over the last couple of years. He's never been arrested. He's never been charged with a crime, but there's just been a lot of stuff about his posse and who he runs with and who he hangs with. When he got suspended by Alvin uh, Adam Silver, the commissioner, the first time, he met privately with Silver, and Silver laid down the guidelines. Your reinstatement is based on this, that is counseling, and that is to remove yourself from your inner circle, to stop making bad decisions, to remove guns and firearms from your gated community estate. And instead, he shows up this past week with another video with another gun. And then the complicated all on Wednesday, he went on social media and he's writing all these comments to family members and friends. And he says, I'm leaving. Bye. There was concern. There were mm. calls to the police about is this player having a mental health issue at his home? Oh, no. So they went to the home, the gates, and they met with him and said, he seemed okay, said he was okay, said people misinterpreted it all, um, and then they left. Uh, at this point, he's got a huge problem with the commissioner. He's got a huge problem with his franchise. Memphis Grizzlies may be about to walk away from him. They may put him on the trading block to get him out of there. He's lost all of his corporate sponsors, including his shoe company contract. They've canceled all the orders for jaw two. It was, that was the new brand of shoe that was out. He doesn't get it. Uh, he continues to run with the same people. You know, he went through counseling said, I learned a lot about myself introspection. I need to make better decisions. And then we sit here in the middle of May and look at that decision that he made, you know, and I said a long time ago on, on our podcast, that the fear that I have is these guys run the streets with guns and think they're beyond everybody else. And somebody else will pull a gun and put a shot into them. We'll find them in an alley. The message has obviously not sunk into John Morant and he is such a great player, but it looks like there's a real problem there. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it seems that on one level you can say bad influence running with the wrong crowd, maybe tough upbringing, but this seems to be a much deeper issue. Like, like you said, maybe it's mental health. If he said, you know, I'm, what did he say? I'm done. I'm out. I'm by, I'm by, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a cry for help. And, and when you have that kind of a mental stress and you've got guns side by side, there's a lot of bad outcomes that can happen as a result of that. So this young man needs some help. And I think it, it's, it's gone beyond just getting a good mentor. It's now really, I think maybe a health issue. It's interesting. Charles Barkley just ripped the hell out of him a couple of weeks ago on, on one of the post-game NBA playoff telecast. And Barkley went after the media at the same time. He said, the media should not be writing columns that there's nothing wrong here. The guy never got charged. It's a deeper problem than that. And then Barkley lectured Moran on network TV, flat out bleeping embarrassed him. You're making all this money. You have a responsibility to the people who gave you all this money. You're making all this money based on your talent, and you have all these followers. You have a responsibility to those kids that are watching you and the families that buy tickets that support you. <laughs> Don't tell me any explanation about your posse, your friends. Uh, what he really needs is he needs, I think, a great NBA player to become his confidant. Yeah, he needs something. To guide him. And I don't know whether that's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's retired and has okay. interacted with great players and is a man of enormous credibility, mm -hmm. whether it's Shaq. I don't know that it would be Barkley, but there's got to be somebody out there that can do an intervention with this young man, because obviously what he went through and what the commissioner told him and how he responded, nothing sank in because we're revisiting this topic on the table again. It's funny that Barkley was lecturing him about his responsibility to children when he was the guy that said, I'm not a role model, yeah. right? I mean, but Barkley, you know, he just likes to push buttons and he's, 
he's loaded. He's making a ton of money because of his controversial opinion. I, I think you have to do a little bit of homework on John Morant and find out who his role models were when he was growing up. Who were the basketball stars that he looked up to? And maybe there's a way that, you know, Adam Silver and some of the other head honchos can get those guys to, to connect. Because if he has this much trouble right now, he might not listen to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, who is this old guy? But he might respect someone else. And we just need to find out who that is. Where is the NBA Players Association? Yeah, that's a good resource there, too. You walk in the door with the right people. And I don't know, maybe the right people would... Sean Elliott, great NBA player oh, from yeah. out here. David Robinson, great NBA player. There's got to be somebody that they can lasso in to put on the same track with this kid and guide this kid. Because I don't want to have to come back here on one of our Thursday podcasts and say, that guy was shot and we found him in an alley. Mm. And I'll tell you, in our society today, that could happen. Yeah. It really could. It could. Okay, on we go.